Hey up everyone, and welcome to another video. You could say this video were a big challenge, and I were targeting the ultimate air gun quarry, the brown air of the UK. Now I started this quest probably the first week of February. I've got some ground that holds airs, quite a large population as well. And I decided a pursuit we're on and a challenge we're on. So off I set. It actually took me three weeks to achieve this. So by end of February, I had some success. Now the brown air is an elegant creature. Synonymous with UK countryside. It's our native species. Obviously we're all aware. That rabbit were introduced many many years ago. Now I need to be very clear the brown air is not something I'll pursue regular. I'd only like to take two or three for a table every year. It's a beautiful meat, absolute delight on a dinner plate. But I am conscious that in some areas the numbers are low. In this particular area the numbers are high and they do need trimming back a little bit. So the ground they like is high on the tops, up on the hills, far away from human interaction. So that's when my pursuit gets underway. I'm climbing peaks, testing my body. I'm not getting any younger, but I still enjoy a stoke and I'm still more than capable. Very challenging conditions. I don't mean the weather, I just mean the brown air in general. What I've found that differentiates them from a rabbit, rabbits can be predictable. If you spot some, you sort of know what they're going to do. You're going to know the movements, they're going to present you with a chance. In terms of air, they don't follow a set path. They like to jink, they like to turn, even when they're just walking. They're constantly moving, constantly deceiving you, turning in a way that you don't expect. So to stoke these elegant, beautiful creatures is a real, real test of your skill set, and it's a real challenge. But it's one that I were up for, one that I embraced, and I were determined to finish successfully. This stoke were many of ones that actually ended in failure. Either the air outwitted me, sensed me, or when I did get an opportunity, I didn't make it count. Now with this particular one, they were a bit closer than what I thought, and I misjudged range. And when I slow it down here, you'll see what happened. The shot went a little bit high, and it actually pierced Air's ears. The air ran off unarmed, and it lived to tell the tale another day. I wasn't disappointed. I was pleased that I'd managed to get close enough. And it gave me encouragement that there might be other opportunities. Back to the drawing board, regroup, refocus, and we'll go again. In some parts of UK, when winter comes, the brown air, or it can be commonly referred to as the mountain air in some regions, will adapt at weather. It'll develop a natural camouflage. 
and the brown coat will all but disappear. And they'll turn white to blend in with hilltops and the snow covered ground. It's a natural phenomenon. And it takes place in a few animals. But this is why the air or the mountain air is a great survivor. It's adaptable, cunning, hardy, and a true beast of the UK countryside. You can see how they blend in. Now this is to evade natural predators. And it's not just us that hunt them. You have your falcons, you have your eagles of the larger kind. And even the cunning fox. Now I find it hard to believe that a fox can outwit or outcatch an air. And more than likely in this footage, it found one that succumbed to some sort of injury or disease. Walking and stalking. My pursuit goes on. I'm as high as you can be. Probably one of the highest places in the UK. And I keep pounding them miles into the ground. God knows how many miles are covered over a three week period. And I got close, but not close enough. But we're never going to give up. We're always going to get to where I wanted to be. And if that meant I got one air, two airs, three airs, it didn't really matter. At this point, it become like a personal quest. And eventually, my look changes. After nearly three weeks, I caught an air, unaware. I rested myself on a stone wall. I took it to the back of head. Now there were a lot of thrashing about, but they're a big animal with a big heart. They take a while to come to rest sometimes. But they're a nice clean kill. Finally, I had my success. Actually, over the moon. I just wanted to look at this video and reflect on some close encounters. This particular air just won't keep itself still. Kept trying to put that cross there where it needed to be. This is what I mean about being unpredictable. And it was soon gone and the opportunity were lost. Now this is a phenomenon. This is a sight to see. As we enter March and April, it becomes prime breeding season for brown air. And they start displaying courtships, battles, When you look at them like this, they remind me of a kangaroo or a wallaby. Very, very similar in stature and how they box each other and how they stand on the bike legs. Maybe this is a UK kangaroo or a species. It'd be interesting to find out if they were related in some way. I might have to do my own little bit of research on that, but I'm sure you see the similarities when they stood on their hind legs, boxing away. So thanks for being on this adventure with me. It's been a testing time, but I finally got there. And I hope you appreciate this animal as much as I do. So after what seems like an eternity, and a personal quest really, I managed to bag myself an air, now I want this for two reasons. I want it for the table, because it's beautiful meat. But I also want to make a shoulder mount. Now the majestic animals, elegant, synonymous with UK countryside. 
So I'd never take many. I'd only take what I wanted for the table. And that'll probably count to two or three a year. I'm pleased to get this one. So let's get to work. I'd like to end this video for just a few seconds, just admiring this beautiful animal. One or two foot table each year is plenty for me. Please respect them. They're a native animal and a beauty to behold. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next one.